I traveled to Afghanistan last week with Defense Secretary Robert Gates for an exclusive 60 Minutes report. Good afternoon, everybody. With a new president, a new strategy is taking hold in Afghanistan. And Secretary Gates went there to make sure troops have what they need to conduct a counterinsurgency, like armored vehicles to protect them from roadside bombs and more field hospitals to treat them if they're wounded. Most of the additional troops coming here to southern Afghanistan will be used very much like the surge troops were in Iraq. They'll move into cities and villages, secure them, and protect the local population from Taliban intimidation. That will buy time to build up the Afghan army and police force so U.S. troops can leave. The question is, how long will that take? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, you want certitude where there is no certainty. This is a war. Gates admitted that it will take two to four years before Afghan security forces even begin to take the lead in military operations. In the meantime, some tactics, like rooting terrorists out of safe havens, are a double-edged sword. Missile strikes by unmanned drones along Pakistan's border with Afghanistan have infuriated the local population because they inevitably lead to civilian casualties. Given what they're costing in popular support, are these missile strikes really worth it? I'm not going to talk about any specific uh, military operations or activities uh, in which we may be engaged. I would just say we will go after al-Qaeda wherever in the world they are. In that other war, Iraq, 13 U.S. troops and 48 civilians have been killed already this month. American forces are scheduled to be out by 2011. What if everything goes to hell in a handbasket? Do you think that U.S. forces may have to be redeployed? I think it would be very difficult uh, for a president to redeploy significant U.S. forces to Iraq. So it wouldn't happen? I, I would be very surprised. Even though... There is, there is a certain point in this process when the Iraqis have to take responsibility for their own future. Bob Gates began his career in government 43 years ago and has served eight presidents. He made it clear to me at his office in the Pentagon nice dish, he Mr. appreciates Secretary. the past. The, uh, three antiques in the room, uh, <laughs> four if you include me. Uh, the desk belonged to General John J. Pershing, Black Jack Pershing. The table behind the desk belonged to Ulysses S. Grant. Wow. And the little round table, I'm told, belonged to Jefferson Davis when he was Secretary of War before he led the rebellion. He may be a Washington insider, but thinks it's a city full of egos and hypocrites. But even if you don't like Washington, you like your job. But the truth of the matter is being Secretary of War in a time of war is a very painful thing. I and mean, how can you like a job when you go to Walter Reed or Bethesda and you know you sent those young men and women uh, in harm's way. And I never forget that for a second. So no, I don't enjoy my job. You can watch the full report on my trip with Secretary Gates this Sunday on 60 Minutes.